So if you remember, our uh, our arcing formula has a requirement that the first derivative of the function whose length we're trying to find has to be continuous on the interval we're looking at. So in this lecture, we're going to look at a couple of examples where that's not the case. And we'll see some ways that sometimes we can use to get around that. All right, so I want to start with this thing. I want to find the arc length of this curve. And hopefully that's familiar to you. It's, it's a, the formula for a circle whose radius is 1, it's a unit circle. Uh, and I want to find its length. So we, obviously we know what the answer needs to be, right? Because we have a, a formula for circumference. Um, but I think this is a good example, right? And we'll know for sure at the end of the day uh, if our method works here. So first thing I need to do is I need to solve this for y so I can find y prime. Right, so y squared equals 1 minus x squared. Then you take the square root. y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Yeah, I'm, I'm just taking the positive square root. Because my initial thought is I'll find the length of the upper arc and then just double it. Right, We'll, we'll rely on the symmetry like we've done in, in lots of other cases. Right, so now if you find the derivative, y prime is 1 half 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside is the chain rule situation, so that's negative 2x. Now the x is, the, the 2's cancel, and this is negative x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you can see here how we're going to get into trouble. Uh, to use my method, right, we would have to find the entire area, the entire length of that upper section, which means integrating from x equals 1, to x equals negative 1, and we can't do that, right? Because that derivative isn't defined at plus or minus 1, and it can't be continuous at a point it isn't even defined at. Okay, so how, how am I going to get around this? Well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still use this symmetry, right? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to integrate and find this piece here, right? That's going to be from pi over 4 to pi over 2, right? And these, these x values, the x values would be from 0 to, I don't know, some number over here. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but it, it's somewhere in the region where y prime is going to be defined, right? And for now, that's really all, all I'm going to care about. All right, so um, how are we going to do this? Well, let, let's go to the formula, right? The formula is s equals the integral from... I'm just going to say from A to B for now, right? And I, I don't know what the X values are. The, the, the X values are going to be, I don't know, some weird number for that uh, right-hand value. And it, it, just be patient, and you'll see that I'm actually going to not going to need it. I'm actually going to end up doing this with the angle measures instead. All right, so this is going to be the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. Now, I square that. It becomes X squared over 1 minus X squared dx. Right now we'll do um, a common denominator here. Make this 1, 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. So I can add these together. And this becomes the integral from a to b. The x squared and the minus x squared, they cancel. So this is just the square root of 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. And I, I can simplify this a little further. Integral a to b uh, the numerator square root of 1 is 1. So this is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay, we know, what, we know how to do something like this. Right, I'm going to do, do a trig substitution. I'm going to let x equal the sine of theta. So dx equals cosine theta d theta. And if we make our substitutions, this is the integral from a to b of 1 over square root of 1, <coughs> excuse me, 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. Now, so this is integral, and you, you see, now th this is why, this is why I wasn't worried about what a and b are, because now I, I'm going to, I'm going to replace what would be the x values with theta values. All right, so you can see from my diagram here, we're, we're going to go from pi over 4 to pi over 2, and that's going to give us an eighth of a circle. At the end of the day, I'll multiply this by 8. We'll get the total circumference. So I'm going to go from pi over 4 to 
to pi over 2. And what is this? This is 1 over this square root of 1 minus sine squared. That's cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. And you see how nice this is going to come out. Those cosines cancel. So this is the integral pi over 4 pi over 2 of d theta. That integral is just theta. So this is theta from pi over 4 to pi over 2, which is pi over 2 minus pi over 4. Now you do your common denominator here. That is pi over 4. And of course, that, like I said, that's an eighth of the circle. So the total distance, put total down here just to distinguish it from the original s, is 8 times pi over 4 which is 2 pi, which is exactly what we expect for the radius, uh, or excuse me, for the circumference of a unit circle. So, so far, at everything we've done, uh, have, we've been working exclusively with functions that were uh, defined as a function of x, usual y equals f of x that we spend most of the class working with. Uh, but at, as we saw with uh, the volume formulas, there's nothing magical about functions of x. Right, this formula works just as well if we have x defined uh, as a function of y. Then it's the exact same formula. It's the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus g prime of y squared. And, and of course, a and b, and I made this explicit over here, a and b are a range of y values. All right, so let's see how we can use this uh, to our advantage here. Now, I'd like to find the arc length of, of this curve, y equals x to the 2 thirds between 0 and 8. And this is going to have the same kind of continuity problem. If I look at the derivative, the derivative is y prime equals 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And that's not defined as 0. So obviously, it can't be uh, continuous there. So how can we get around this? Well, wh what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to raise both sides to the 3 halves power. Right? So I'm going to solve it for x. And if I do that, it becomes x equals y to the 3 halves. So x prime equals 3 halves y to the 1 half. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay here. But to do this, first I need to convert these two x values over here, the 0 and 8, into the corresponding y values. Because that's what I'm going to integrate from and to. So when x equals 0, y equals 0 to the 2 thirds, which is 0. And when x equals 8, y equals 8 to the 2 thirds, which is 4. So instead of integrating from 0 to 8, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4. And my function over here is uh, defined on that interval, and it is going to be continuous on that interval. So now we can go to our formula. Right? The arc length is equal to the integral. I get the integral in there. The integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus 3 halves y to the 1 half squared dy. All right, that's the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus 9 fourths y dy. And I can integrate this if, if you want to write it out with, with uh, just a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal 1 plus 9 fourths y du equals 9 fourths dy so dy is 4 ninths du now i'll do my substitutions this is the integral 0 to 4 square root of u times 4 ninths du and now i can i can do the antiderivative this is 4 ninths times uh, 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And now, now I'll, I'll go back to x's, right? We're going to do this from 0 to 4, because I'm going to go back to, excuse me, go back to y's here. This is 8 27ths 1 plus 9 fourths y to the 3 halves from 0 to 4. All right, so let's put these numbers in. This is 8 27ths times, if I put 4 in there, 
Uh, nine fourths times four is nine. So this is 10 to the three halves minus, and if I put zero in there, nine fourths times zero is zero. So that's just one. And one to the three halves power is one. And yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that, right? That's, that's my final area for the arc length of this curve.